G'day, my name is AB Nispel. I'm going to be bringing you some fast attack craft gameplay on Parasol Storm. So, this vehicle I would refer to as the Glass Orb. Unfortunately, this game I didn't get the end because the game crashed. So, if you want to see what my stats were, there you go. Anyway, let's just go on to like the actual more critical stuff about this content that I'm going to be putting up. I'm going to be pretty much explaining to you my thought process of how I use the attack boat, as well as going over some uh, basic uh, strats and things you need to rely on and use to use the attack boat to its full potential. I will also be going over some things that you can transition from map to map as well. So like, for, for example, if it's maybe a map that doesn't really have jets, or if it only has maybe attack jets, I can really kind of put into your thought process as to what is your target priorities. I will also be going over optimal positioning as what your target threats to prioritize to get an easy win on any naval map which involves an attack boat. I'll be also going over loadouts that you can use in the attack boat that are effective. Anyway, let's get into it. So for loadout, let's just get that out of the way easily. I normally run 25 mils in TV missiles because it's the most versatile loadout that you can use. Although, on the flip side, I could put an argument. The tow missile can be just as effective, if not better, in certain situations when applied correctly. In those certain situations, I think the uh, tow missile is actually better at taking out aircraft, but I find that the TV missile has more impact and help for your team, which is what I'm about to cover right now. So with the TV missile, one of the bonuses of using it is you can really, really harass the enemy team and how you go about harassing the team is using that TV missile as basically strategic fire support. With your big map and HUD, you have a whole unlimited amount of information for you to direct your um, TV missile in. And you have no idea how much that's going to make an impact in a fight. Which, And you have no idea how much that's going to make a difference in a fight where your two teammates are having a fight with an enemy or multiple enemies and you put in that extra 35 damage which makes the difference between them winning or dying. So one of your teammates might be trying to attack the enemy boat and if you put in 25 damage that means they only have to hit two maybe three rockets and their enemy boat's dead. Also one thing people forget the TV does it basically always gets a moby hit unless they're running reactive armor and it also goes through active protection which makes a huge difference. So the fact that it actually hits vehicles for mobility, it's almost a death sentence, especially in a situation where it needs to um, outrun the engagement. So it's a scenario where they're not in a favorable position and then if they don't run now, they're gonna be sent back to the spawn screen. And if you hit that Moby hit on them, it's basically GG for them and it's a matter of seconds that they, until they die. One of the things that um, I find that uh, 25 mils do is people that know how to use cover correctly or um, in buildings, it really gets them out of there. You can secure some kills more easily. Not to say that our uh, burst cannons doesn't have its place. Burst cannons, if you have good aim, will easily you get kills with that. As well as you can actually put a lot of pressure on the aircraft as well. So having TVs, burst cannons, or running the turn missile, depending on how you want to play and what's going on, that can be just really effective against enemy aircrafts. And it's actually not uncommon in competitive that attack boats will run two different loadouts. I won't go too much um, into about that though, because the game has only got six weeks left on its lifespan. I might cover it in another video, because I do actually have some more attack boat gameplay I would like to put out for you. So, how to stay alive in the attack boat. The best way for that is to keep your distance from the enemy, like you would for a little bird or a jet or the attack chopper. You want to have some distance on your side so you can actually dodge incoming rockets. It's a different story if we're talking about lock-on missiles. With lock-on missiles, you want to try and use yourself, um, use cover correctly. So yes, it's a bit like a tank. Trying to avoid um, lock-ons by using the cover provided on the map as best as possible. I find that thermal optics is not necessarily the be-all or end-all for uh, running optics on a boat especially on most of these naval maps because you actually find yourself most of the time in situations where the enemy doesn't have really great cover or there's a very minimal foliage and you can kind of see where they are anyway along with everything else happening in the game. 
You can also remove terrain as well, so such as trees, etc. And it's just even harder for them to hide, so then you can just use zoom optics for what they do best, easily hitting your bullets and being way more efficient at killing your enemy. You can also take maximum advantage of um, zoom optics if you uh, take the time to uh, remove the trees. So for example on A flag, I noticed a lot of times in scrims and stuff what their uh, attack boat would do when they actually own that flag is it would take some time using uh, its uh, main cannons to actually take out the trees so it's almost impossible to actually come up to the A flag. The only way you will be able to actually retake it is if you have um, a coordinated push. So it can almost just sit there solo by itself and just you basically just have a free flag. There's just no way to um, take it because if you brute force your way onto it, the boat can just pull up, get her out of there, and just return back once you've um, buggered off. Or it can just once again move on to another flag. The boat is just basically the king of um, long range engagements. But your biggest threat in the attack boat is not the straw rockets, the other enemy attack boat, or anything like that. Your biggest threat, honestly, is a stealth jet or an attack jet constantly harassing you and especially if they work together no offense but like there's no way you're going to be able to actually get a win out of that scenario it's a simple mass game a lot of people get really upset about like you know oh i've been killed by this and that well when you get 3v1 like it obviously makes sense that you're going to lose especially when a vehicle, a vehicle that's actually designed to counteract you so there's no point getting really upset about that it's how the game's designed and how the balance works and no offense like if you really want to kill a jet if you just take the time to um master the straw rocket or actually use some scrim strats like you will be able to take the jet out and keep it at bay trust me i'm friends with silk and i've already used some of these strats on him as well like it does work. One of the advantages is also of running um, 25 mils if you pair it with the autoloader. You can just rack up damage so fast and so quick. And it's just so amazing and useful. I honestly think that thermo camo on the boat is almost irrelevant at this point because the way how the boat is blends into the map it just stands out so easy in the water in the first place and even when you're trying to use cover correctly and stuff it's just really easy to see the boat in the first place the only thing that's really useful for it maybe is to be constantly unspotted on the map but if the team's actually um, using the q key it's really easy to keep your chase keep you spotted on the map also, you can always just do the uh, quick jump in and out trick to un unspot yourself anyway, so I find it almost irrelevant to use it. You just might as well use auto loader load or any other thing that you can use to uh, help your survivability in the attack boat. Or put out way more damage, because anything that makes you have a more greater DPS, that means in 1v1 scenarios, you're basically guaranteed the win. Things you need to consider at the start of the game is basically flag assets. So if they get the A flag at the start, they're going to obviously have an extra boat. And if they all run as a pack, it really is hard to deal with. So at the start of the game, you should be trying to find a way to support A and B because they're both A. They are both flag assets which have a vehicle to spawn on them. And if you can hold them for most of the game, you're basically guaranteed the winner. Parasol Storm, sadly. Other maps, you, you know, once again. You just got to take in constantly information from your HUD and your big map and play the role of getting some shots on them first before that engagement even really begins and then close in for the kill. Just take note, anything that's um, an uh, aircraft, so an aeroplane, those are going to be your biggest threats to deal with, so make sure you can kill them. If you're working with a mate, just throw a TV missile onto the AA and that makes a huge difference because then that basically means they can easily one strafe the enemy AA. Things to also consider is keeping an eye out for um, the attack chopper because the attack chopper will finish you super quick and can kind of actually dodge sometimes your TV missile. Probably the only one that will just harass you and not really end you unless they are actually working together is the little bird. The little bird can be a little bit annoying. Um, if you're running TV missile and you can keep them at range then yeah it's really easy or if you're running TV missile it's actually really easy to track them and it makes it really hard especially if you're running burst cannon as well. And if they get too close to you, if your tracking's good, just shoot them out with the 25mm. I've done that so much, it's so effective. Ironically, the advice I'm about to give you while I'm doing this in this video footage is try and avoid this uh, middle bay area where um, the flags are. 
because if they own both sides you can basically shot from the left the right behind in the front and if you already know if you're even at, when you're playing infantry right you want your enemy to be in front of you not flanking you from behind so only really push like this if you've got your back flag behind you to cover you and you've got plenty of mates with you covering your back because then all you have to worry about is what is in front of you also remember that you're basically off spawn point as well so flags like b and a for example more specifically b even though you can't really get on the cap zone maybe just chill there for a minute or two and then you'll have teammates that will spawn off you and actually try and push the flag as well so remember you are actually are a spawn beacon that you can just walk around the whole map and kind of apply pressure to the other side but once again when you hold three flags at the end of the day Technically, you're draining the other team of tickets, so you're in a position um, where the enemy has to kind of come to you, and then you can take full advantage and use and abuse that to your advantage. Because the enemy will have to fight for the cap circle, and the cap circle is the bait. One of 3v1 with their vehicles, for example, let's say right now, two of their boats spawn, and I'm trying to make my way to A flag, I'm basically dead because if they both have TV missiles, boom, that's one that goes through my active protection, boom, that's another that hits me for our um, mobility, and all it will take is just a bit of more damage and I'm basically on back on the spawn screen again. So once again, trying to stick to your side of the map, but being in positions where you can apply pre pressure to their flags is very optimal. Also, just to let you know, the 25 mils are super effective at clearing that tower up there. Once you destroy all the walls, you can just basically splash damage and take them out of there, even on the top of the conning tower. If they are sitting up the very top of the conning tower, just shoot the floors above them and the splash damage comes down on top of them. So if you got a couple of javs up there, no problem, just do that. Anyway, unfortunately I didn't have the recording of the end of this game because my game crashed so I couldn't show you exactly what I was about to walk into, but long story short, I came around a corner and I just saw about 8 different people in front of me with plenty of tickets still left and the game crashed. I hope you enjoyed this content and I will be putting out some more game footage for um, boat gameplay as well as other stuff. Peace.